Hello, hello, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome everyone. Um, so here we are once again, ready to um, to get started with a new lesson. Today we're going to be working on our um, session number 12. We are only a few sessions away actually from finishing um, the course. Now, for this afternoon, what we're going to be dealing with is going to be a few things. We're going to wrap up the topic related to time contrast. That's going to be one of the things. Then we're going to talk a little bit about intonation in statements because um, sometimes I think that I have mentioned this before. In English, we don't have um, tildes. We don't have, uh, you know, the regular acento as we referred to it in Spanish. Uh, what we do have is intonation. And of course, intonation, the same way it works in Spanish, is going to dictate the importance of um, certain sections in a sentence. So yeah, we have that. We're going to be talking about intonation. Then we are going to be dealing a little bit with uh, a reading assignment. This reading is one taken from the platform, is the one titled, Are You In Love? So we're going to be reading uh, this one. However, we're not going to be able to be looking at the different um, exercises that are available on the platform because I've been trying to load the platform, but it's not working right now. So um, yeah, for the time being, we're not going to be able to, you know, to solve the, the exercises. Let's hope that we're also going to have time for a practice um, because that's also going to be important if we can have the time to talk about, well, a conversation. The conversation is, um, I need a job. Uh, so yeah, we are going to be talking about that. And uh, I don't think that we're going to have time, but if we do, we might also get to talk about Jaron's uh, use and short responses. Um, so yeah, those will be the things that we are going to be discussing. But before that, before we get to talk about any of this, I have a question for you. The question this afternoon for you guys to start thinking about it is, what is your dream job? If you have an offer, you know, the, somebody offers you a position at a company, what will be the job that you will desire to have the most? So what will be that dream position, that dream um, situation for you to work on? Uh, I think we're going to start by hearing from Jorge. So tell us, Jorge, what will be your dream job? Hello, mister. Hello. Okay, my, my dream job is... Uh, has my my company about okay. mm -hmm. ac uh, account administration from accounts okay of, so it... of client clients mm -hmm. or other company that's God give give me so your dream job basically will basically will be um to to have your own company sounds you know like a like a nice idea yeah uh nowadays i think that many people are starting you know to dream or think like that back in the days i think it was more like we accommodated to what we had you know when, whenever somebody offered us a job we were just okay with that we were just like okay now i have a job i have to be grateful but I think in these times, we have seen how, um, you know, humanity has changed and how people can grow from having nothing to maybe not becoming rich, but at least having a nice life. Uh, and the, I think we desire for more. You know, we have that expectation of going for more. So great. Having your own company as an accountant or having your own accounting company sounds like a, like a very legit idea. Now, uh, let's hear from Guadalupe. What do you think, Guadalupe? What will be your dream job? Este, en Hispanic, por favor. ¿Cuál sería su trabajo soñado? Mm. Mm. Permítame. 
Nunca he pensado en eso. Oh, really? Bueno. <laughs> Pregúntele otro, ya pienso y ya okay. le contesto yo. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's see. How about Samuel? Now that you are here, Samuel. Um, what do you think will be your dream job? Un trabajo que, o sea, que sea como el trabajo soñado. What will be your, your dream job, Samuel? Hola, teacher. Hello. Hello. Is... Mm -hmm. What idea do we have? What I do don't know. Have? You don't know? No. Just think about something. I mean, Jorge wants to be, you know, uh, the 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 owner of a of a company how about you or are you okay with the job that you have like wouldn't you want to have something better something um greater if we can say it bueno okay so while you guys think i may share with you my desire my dream my um idea of uh, a dream job i honestly don't think that I would like to be um, the owner of a company. I feel more like an associate, probably, because the responsibility that comes with owning a company is very, very high. And, uh, you know, people are going to expect things from you. So in my case, I would like to be part of a company, yes, but more like as a vice president, as, as you know, as the co-owner, not the main owner, because I always think of that. I think of like, um, sometimes the, how can we say the, 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 um, whoo, the sacrifice is bigger when you are the one who is like in front of, of a situation, you have to get more. But when you're the second in command, I mean, you, you do have responsibilities, you do have to, to do things, but it's not as strong or as big as when you are the main person in charge of a company. So yeah, I do think that, um, you know, being part of a company is great, but having all those uh, responsibilities is something that you have to be very prepared for uh, if you are going to, if you're going to go for any of that. Uh, but yeah. In my case, what I would like to do is be the vice president of a electrical company because I like that. I like to work as an electrician. Um, actually, I do, you know, right now uh, I am working as an electrician. I come to teach the classes and then I go back into into my um, my workspace. Um, so it's something that actually has gained a lot of interest in me. I like it a lot. And that is also the reason why I, I am also learning about um, AC, you know, air conditioning. I'm starting, I started a, a course two weeks ago in which I hope to learn how to install and repair and maintain air conditioning systems because I am very, very in love with the idea of the electricity and, you know, making um, systems work. It's just something You can that... do, teacher. Hmm? You can do about the... Electrician. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that brings me joy. I have been working on that area for almost two years. O sea, ya tengo casi dos años trabajando como electricista. Y ahorita, o sea, ya tengo bastante experiencia. Ya he hecho casas, o sea, instalado casas yo solo y todo. Um, but the thing that I don't know about is air conditioning. So that's something that I'm learning, you know, right now. Um, but yeah, those things are interesting for me. And if I ever have the chance to become the co-owner of a electrician, uh, electric, electric company, it will be electric company, I will be more than willing to do it because, yeah, those things are, are great. And I love, you know, working on that. Now, uh, did you think about it, Guadalupe? Do we have an idea now? Yes. Okay. I would like, I told to go from country to country in the multi multi 
the national company. Okay, that would be great. Maybe as a super supervisor, like as a regional supervisor, right? That would be great. Yes, because some jobs offer you that, uh, you know, for example, the flight attendants, if you were to work as a flight attendant, but the only thing is that they have a lot of restrictions, for example, age and things like those. Um, so probably, you know, it's, it's a bit, of, it's a bit of a complicated situation, but if, for example, you have the chance to become a supervisor, that will be an, a, a thing that can happen. If you are a regional supervisor, you, you will have the chance to travel from here to there and getting to know more places, getting to know more people, getting to know more cultures. So also one of those things that sounds as a, as an amazing job. So nice idea. Okay, how about um, Samuel? Ya pensó en algo? Have you, ya, ya, ya tiene alguna idea? What would be your dream job? Mm. Um, no. No? <laughs> okay. I know that, I mean, esa es una pregunta que se hace en kinder siempre. Sí, cuando estamos en, en, en básica, bueno, yo menos me acuerdo que a mí me preguntaban eso. Y cuando yo estaba pequeño siempre decía que mi trabajo soñado era ser bombero. That's what I, I, I would say, like, all the time. I want to be a firefighter. Um, but, but, yeah, nowadays it's like, um, probably my, my dream job is the one that I mentioned before, you know. But, uh, okay, now, how about uh, Glenda? What do you think, Glenda? What would be your dream job? ¿Qué, qué quisiera hacer o algo así? ¿Cuál sería su trabajo soñado? Oh, what would you like in personal training? Oh, cool. Yes. Y, um, ¿Cómo se dice? Adiestradora canina. <laughs> uh, dog trainer? Yes. Okay. That sounds great. So a personal trainer and a dog trainer as well. Yes, yes. Okay. Or, or maybe pet trainer. But yeah, those are jobs that are also very interesting because you have also the chance, you know, to do what you love because I understand that you love to do like physical activities and running and all that. So you have the chance to do that. And at the same time, you have the opportunity to help other people with that. So it sounds like a very interesting situation or a very interesting thing to do. Great. Thank you. Thank very you. good. Okay. How about Gustavo? What do you think, Gustavo? What do you think is going to be your dream job? Or what is a, a, a dream that you have in terms of like where you would like to work or Usted something like that? Eh, teacher, están llamada ahorita, Gustavo. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Um, how about then, Josué? What do you think, Josué? What will be your dream job? Hi, teacher. Hello there. Um, I would like um, and business administration and managing. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you would like to be a manager in, in terms of a business administration. Sounds great. Also, you know, a good idea. Like, for example, if you are right now working on something related to administrating a, a business or, well, in your case, guys, um, you work as, um, what you call it, as, uh, as basically administrators of a, of a company, uh, it means that, yeah, once again, you will have the chance to, um, to do that and it will be very closely related to your current job. So sounds like something reachable and sounds also like something um, very plausible. So good, very good. Now, hey, teacher. Yes. Yes, Gustavo. Tell me. Okay, so Gustavo, now that you're back, what will be your dream job? What will be a job that you will enjoy doing every day of your life? I would like uh, to work with software and focuses on robotics. Oh, okay. I act, I act, and actually I develop a system, but not for robotics. Not for robotics, yeah. Because the other day I heard that you told me, uh, I think it was on Friday, that you were gonna work during the weekend on on uh, coding. Yes. So yeah, it's uh, but robotics is 
also something that is in demand nowadays. Okay. I, I, as, as I have heard, I don't, I'm not sure, but I heard that robotics is something that is very, very on demand and that a lot of people, you know, are going to need um, systems for, for those machines in, in the future. I think it's fun for you or funny. I don't know what, how to describe it. Antes que nada, eso, fun y funny, es una cosa que a muchas personas les pasa que se confunden. Sí, funny es cuando algo es gracioso y fun es cuando algo es divertido. Parecido como se dice, pero no es exactamente lo mismo. Okay, so I think it's funny for you when you see the robots that they have in restaurants. No sé qué piensa usted cuando, cuando ve los robots que tienen en los restaurantes ahorita en Wendy's que he visto. Creo que es en Lourdes, no estoy seguro si es en Lourdes o en Santa Tecla. Que tienen ¿Y escalón? Los, en escalones. Y ahí que, tienen que, uno. Ajá, que y tienen es... unos robots y que se equivocan todos. Y en el hospital han implementado uno en el hospital ah, Sacamil. También vi algo acerca de eso el otro día. Pero me imagino que se le hace gracioso cuando, cuando se equivocan y quisiera meterle mano a usted, ¿o no? <risa> claro. Sí. Ok, good. Yeah, because it happens to me too. You know, when I, whenever I look at people and I see that they make mistakes when they are working on an electrical system, or I remember when I was younger, I would see my dad because my dad is also an electrician. So I would see my dad uh, looking at the roof. You know, as soon as we enter a house, he will be looking at the roof and looking at, at some details and I will never know what he was doing. But now I catch myself doing the same because as soon as I enter a, a place, I go like analyzing how they did, you know, the electrical work. Um, and I think it's something that happens a lot when you enjoy something that you do. I do like teaching a lot. I'm not going to say that I don't. Uh, but sometimes it's not, you know, as enjoyable. There are some days when I just feel like there are more things that I would like to do with my life apart from, from only teaching. Um, so, yeah, I, I do that. And when I see situations where people may have problems or people maybe made mistakes if in their electrical systems, I just go like, I could do it better. So I think it's the same, you know, whenever you do or see something that you know you're capable of doing in a better way, probably you, you just think to yourself that you could do it better. Okay, so the last person that I'm going to be asking is going to be Janira. Or are you busy, Janira? Um, okay, what is your dream job, Janira? I would like it, uh, to work. Uh, Oh, as a vet. As a, you can say a vet or you can say also a pet doctor. A pet doctor. But great. Yeah, working as a vet. That is actually my girlfriend's dream job. She wanted to study something related to, to medicine. She wanted to be uh, like a nurse or something. Uh, sure. Yes. Y creo que usted mencionó pets and um, vets, eh, independientemente para el tipo de animal o pets es eh, eh, para más de uso, de uso doméstico. Uh, el, ¿Cómo? ¿Pet doctor el, o, uh, o, o el, vets doctor? Ese, el, esa es la pregunta. El, si pet, doctor, es... el pet doctor es para la, las mascotas más básicas, digamos. Domésticas. Para, ajá. Ajá, domésticas. Eso en cambio, refiero. el vet este ve más o sea, animales en general. Sí. Un vet, o sea, el veterinario ve animales en general. It can be farm animals, it can be wild animals, or it can be domestic animals. So a pet doctor is for, um, for dogs, for cats, for rabbits, you know, regular pets that we may have. But a vet is specialized in basically all kinds of animals. Not every single one of them, but a vet will go deeper into working with cows, horses, um what else deers you know things like those snakes even so yeah a bed is is something a little bit wider than a pet doctor but okay so uh now that we have an idea of a dream that we may have in terms of working in terms of uh the job that we would like to have we have to wrap up some of these situations here So from yesterday, we see here, aquí tengo incluso guardadas algunas de los, de los ejemplos que ustedes presentaban uh, del día de ayer cuando hablábamos acerca del time contrast. Perdón. Ahora, solo quería que aclaráramos o que dejáramos ya bien sentado, ¿verdad? Eh, algunas de las frases que se pueden utilizar, ¿sí? Algunas frases que, que podemos eh, nosotros, ¿verdad? 
identificar cuando una situación va a tratarse acerca del pasado y cuando puede ser acerca del presente y el momento en el cual esa situación se está explicando, se está mencionando en el futuro. So, the first one. When we have situations that refer to the past, we can see that uh, here we use a few years ago. This means unos años atrás, a few years ago. Then we have something like this. Here we don't really have a time phrase or a phrase related to the, to the specific time, but we do have this, used to, used to, okay? This structure, used to, is very, simil very specific for the past. We can use it in the present. Yes, we can use it in the present. We can use, for example, something or some things that we do every day. Like we can say, I am very used to having coffee in the morning. That means that it's a practice. It's a common practice that you have in the present. But the way in which you're going to see used to more commonly used is when you refer to situations of the past. Uh, an example of that will be you saying, I used to work as a what? As, um, mm, as a painter, let's say. I used to work as a painter, but now I am a traffic distributor. So that is when you're talking about something from the past. Or we can say, for example, I used to know how to ride a bicycle, but now I have forgotten it. So that is used to. Then we have mentioning a specific dates or a spe a specific times. Cuando hablamos acerca de tiempos específicos, también, ¿verdad? En el pasado. Y, claro, cuando utilizamos la palabra ago, ¿sí? Si utilizamos la palabra ago, ahí estamos refiriéndonos a que es en el pasado. Uh, so if we say 50 years ago, hace 50 años. If we say, what? Two years ago, ¿sí? Eso es dos hace dos años. Entonces, eh, Siempre que mencionemos así tiempos específicos con el ago, vamos también a estar hablando acerca del pasado. Porque el problema es que si solo decimos 50 years, eso puede que en algún caso, en algún momento, alguien pueda entender que se refiere al futuro. Porque hay una, una preposición que se utiliza antes de decir in 50 years, y, y eso sería para hablar acerca del futuro. Si yo digo in 50 years, si ustedes se fijan acá está in 20 years, ¿sí? In 20 years. Eso significa que es una, un mensaje, una idea acerca del futuro. So, for the past, it's going to be ago, and it's going to go after the year. But for the, for the future, it's going to be in, and it's going to be before the years. So, for the present. Oh, wait. Primero vamos a cerrarlo del past. So, we have at that time. This is another option. See, at that time, en ese tiempo, at that time. Then we have in the past, in the past, very similar, very specific also. In the past, eh, este puede ser utilizado en situaciones similares a cuando ustedes utilizan los tiempos específicos con el ago. O sea, ustedes pueden decir, ¿verdad? In the past, I was able to, to sing songs when I was little. I was able to sing, uh, but now my voice is different, so I cannot sing anymore. And we have also then, ¿sí? Then. Esto vamos a entenderlo como entonces. Um, el then normalmente se va a utilizar al final de las oraciones. El then no va a ir al principio, ¿sí? Cuando utilizamos then al principio, se entienden las oraciones como eh, decir, ¿verdad? Como si fuese una pregunta. Eh, por ejemplo, si yo les dije a ustedes, then are we going to the party? Entonces, es como una pregunta. Entonces, ¿vamos a ir a la fiesta? En cambio, eh, si lo utilizamos al final, normalmente va a ser referencia, ¿verdad? Al, al pasado. Digamos, um, do you eso es conste, otra cosa. El then normalmente se va a utilizar cuando se ha mencionado un evento del pasado, ¿ok? O sea, digamos que ustedes mencionen el terremoto, ¿sí? Del 2001. So, do you remember that earthquake? And then you go like, I don't know where I was then, ¿sí? Entonces sería, no sé dónde estaba en ese entonces. Así que eh, cuando mencionamos eventos específicos así del pasado, es cuando podemos utilizar el then. Pero el then va a estar al final de la oración, no al principio. Recuerden entonces, mencionando eventos específicos del pasado y también eh, colocando el then al final. 
Muy bien, para el presente. We go back to the year. Yes, 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 yes. ¿Puede, puede repetir, por favor, el ejemplo? Uh, por ejemplo, si yo les dijera, do you remember the earthquake on 2001? Sí, ¿recuerdas el, 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 el terremoto, verdad, de, de, del 2001? Uh -huh. And sí. then I tell you, I don't remember where I was then. Sí, o sea, no me acuerdo dónde estaba en ese entonces. Um, otro ejemplo podría ser... Um, Alguien que sea del 2002, sí, puede decir, o oh, en el caso de mi hermana, ella estaba bien chiquitita para ese entonces, podría decir, I was too little then, sí, I was too little then, estaba muy pequeña en ese entonces. Así que eso okay. ese, se va a referir, ¿verdad?, a que habla acerca del pasado. Um, Thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome. Teacher, pero una, tengo una duda con then. Eh, uh -huh. He escuchado que a veces, bueno, pero quizás más, el, más nosotros como los latinos, hacemos como una pausa y entonces dice, está contando algo, ta, 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 ta y luego dice, then. then. Ajá, entonces no sé si ahí es este, correcto usarlo o es que nosotros lo hacemos de una forma incorrecta. Ahí es donde va eso, miren, esta parte, este tema de la entonación, porque ahí uh. es casi como cuando ustedes en español, o sea, alguien se, se, se para, se detiene a la hora que está contando una historia y ustedes dicen, entonces... Básicamente así tendrá que ser interpretado. Then, sí, o sea, la E se hace como más larga. We say then, sí, para poder eh, como llamar a la persona a que continúe, ¿verdad? Contando la historia que, que nos estaba diciendo. So we go then, sí, no sería solo then. En el otro, en el sentido cuando se utiliza eh, en una frase del pasado, o sea, yo solo digo, ¿verdad? I was too little then, no le doy ninguna entonación diferente. En cambio, si lo vamos a utilizar, puede ser también en una historia, puede ser como usted menciona, en el caso que alguien esté haciendo como una lista de, 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 de situaciones o eventos o cosas. Entonces, ahí sí podríamos decir then, sí, o sea, como ya estuvo, hay más, o qué pasó después. Así se podría interpretar. Um, pero la entonación es la que va a hacer que, que ese significado se dé diferente. Y además, la otra cosa es que en ese sentido no es la persona a la que está hablando, perso perdón, la persona que está hablando quien va a decir el den, sino que va a ser alguien, una segunda persona, ¿verdad? Alguien externo a ella o a él. Entonces, si lo dijese la misma persona sería extraño. Es como que se esté cuestionando a sí mismo, a sí misma. En cambio, si lo hace usted, ya también eso mismo va a ayudar a que entendamos que está refiriéndose al otro uso que tiene la palabra den, que sería el indagar acerca de lo que se está diciendo. Así como les decía, en el caso que lo utilicemos eh, al principio, ¿verdad? De una oración. O sea, si yo digo, then, are we having pizza for, for, for lunch? Or then, are we having pizza for dinner? Sí. Eso significa como, o sea, que yo estoy queriendo averiguar, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿vamos a comer pizza para el almuerzo o para la cena? Entonces, ahí, ¿verdad? Es donde, donde cabe esa utilización también del then, al principio de, de las diferentes oraciones. Okay, so now we go with the present. In present, we can say things like these days, these days. Eso se refiere a en estos días, these days. We also have today, today. Este today se va a entender como hoy, aunque también en español, como no necesariamente lo decimos así, puede ser más como en la actualidad, sí, today. Then we have nowadays, now, sorry, nowadays, nowadays. Este sería en estos días, el nowadays se va a entender como um, en estos tiempos, hasta cierto, en cierto modo, ¿sí? Nowadays. Se, se, se sigue la misma línea de those, perdón, de these days, ¿sí? Sigue casi como la misma idea de decir estos días, uh, pero este es más como, por ejemplo, decir hoy en día, ¿sí? Es más como en singular que el decir estos días. Sí, hoy en día sería mejor la interpretación para nowadays. Then we have currently. Sí, currently. Este es uno que en muchas ocasiones eh, nos equivocamos de hecho y utilizamos esta otra palabra. Y o sea, nos, nos pasa a todos, creo yo, que decimos actually en lugar de decir currently. La palabra correcta es currently. Y nosotros decimos actually para decir actualmente. Sí actualmente, porque actually significa de hecho, entonces pero normalmente tenemos esa, esa situación, ¿verdad? en la que lo utilizamos de forma incorrecta, y decimos actually, cuando en realidad lo que deberíamos decir es currently, o sea algo 
que pasa actualmente. Now, we also have in the meantime. Ahora, in the meantime no es tan común que se use, ¿sí? O sea, in the meantime se puede utilizar, por ejemplo, eh, en situaciones como la que tenemos en este momento, que estamos en una clase, o si ustedes están en una reunión. En cosas así se puede utilizar in the meantime, pero no es como para una conversación abierta acerca, qué sé yo, de hablar acerca de... Um, de la gente, de la vida y cómo la vida es en estos tiempos, no necesariamente. Porque in the meantime se va a entender mientras, ¿sí? Como por ejemplo, si yo les estoy diciendo para mientras. Uh, let's say that right now I had to go, I don't know, if my dad was home, I would have to go help my dad with something. And I will tell you, hey, um, continue reading in the meantime, ¿sí? O sea, continúen haciendo una práctica de lectura mientras tanto. Entonces, Así se va a entender in the meantime. Eh, or in a meeting, as I said before. Let's say that the person who, who was speaking um, has to get a phone call and maybe they tell them, um, you guys can continue, you know, discussing the topic in the meantime. Entonces, ¿es siempre relacionado al presente? Sí, pero se va a utilizar, ¿verdad? Como cuando hay, o sea, ustedes tienen que hacer algo mientras, eh, como para despejar el tiempo. Eh, durante, durante un cierto periodo. Entonces, por eso tenemos el in the meantime. And then we have now. Now. Now es ahora, ¿sí? O sea, se utiliza muy, muy, muy comúnmente cuando hablamos acerca de situaciones del presente. Uh, let's say that, um, what? Yesterday I was tired, but now I am not as tired, ¿sí? Entonces es... Casi como decir ahora, similar a la utilización del today, sí, bastante similar a cómo vamos a utilizar today, pero now es como más específico para el momento presente, o sea, como para este momento, ¿verdad? So, now. Um, or maybe you can say, an hour ago I had a headache, but now I'm okay. Entonces, ahora ya estoy bien. Así que ahí tenemos la utilización de now, otra de las frases para hablar acerca del presente. Then we have the future. When we talk about the future, we're going to have a few of them as well. So, the first one is soon. Soon. When we talk about soon, we talk about a close future. You know, a future that is not, go, is not too far away. It's not, uh, it's not going to take too long for us to get to those situations. So, soon. What can we say, for example, about the course? The, this course that we're taking right now, Intermediate 2, is going to finish soon. Yeah, so it's a course that doesn't have too long for it to end. Uh, so yes, that's an, an example of using soon. Or soon, we will finish with this course. So that's something that is related to a uh, nearby future. Then we have... Specific times before I told you that in 20 years. Entonces, eso es para tiempos específicos. Cuando vamos a mencionar, ¿verdad? Momentos o, o fechas específicas, decimos in and then the amount of years. Normally, we don't go too specific, porque si pudiese, pudier, nos pusiéramos a ser bien específicos, eh, también se puede. Yo puedo decir, pero en ese caso va a ser diferente dependiendo si mencionamos solamente el mes. O si mencionamos uh, también la fecha. O sea, porque, por ejemplo, si yo les dijese algo que voy a hacer, um, qué sé yo, el próximo miércoles, entonces en ese caso no voy a decir in next Wednesday, sino que voy a tener que decir on next Wednesday. Sí, on next Wednesday, porque es una preposición diferente ya. Yeah. So, yes, so that's something that we also have to take into account when we are, um, you know, using these specifics. Um, now, if it was a month, I can also say in, in a few months or in 10 months. Entonces, en ese caso, sí, podría, ¿verdad? También um, utilizarlo. In a month and two weeks, por ejemplo. Eso sí, en, 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 un, en un mes eh, y medio o en un mes y dos semanas. Eh, you can also say in a month and a half. But yeah, if you were to say something like that, yes, you can use in. But if you're going to mention the date, the specific date, Then you have to change the preposition and you have to use on. Then we have in the future. This one is more general. Ese es bastante más general, ¿verdad? Cuando se dice in the future, o sea, en el futuro, 
doesn't go with any specific uh, things. It can be used for a nearby future or for a future that is still very far away. Entonces, este se puede utilizar básicamente para hablar acerca del futuro en cualquier punto del futuro. Puede ser algo que pasó hace mucho tiempo, perdón, que, que creemos que va a pasar en mucho tiempo o que creemos que eh, pues ya básicamente va a pasar muy en corto, ¿verdad? But in the future. And then the next ones we have are in the next couple of years, in the next couple of years, we refer to um, from this year and maybe what, uh, two more years. An example of this could be in the next couple of years, we're going to have a Plaza Mundo in Usulután. So they are starting to build it. So we can say, you know, that in the next couple of years, there's going to be that uh, mall in Usulután. Now, we have also next. Next. Next es otro similar a cuando utilizamos now. Eh, pero este next se usa principalmente cuando tenemos eh, un contraste. Sí, cuando tenemos como algo con que comparar, ¿verdad? La frase que vamos a decir con next. Por ejemplo, mmm, si yo dijera, now people like to wear um, dark colors for winter. Sí, now people are wearing dark colors for winter. Next, they're going to use bright colors for spring. Sí, entonces es como, si estamos hablando de moda, ¿verdad? O sea, en estos días a la gente le gusta utilizar colores oscuros para el invierno. Hablando específicamente de, de Estados Unidos. Eh, luego, eso, así se entendería next. Luego, van a, a utilizar colores claros o colores brillantes para eh, la primavera. So that's how we use it. We place first an example of what we're going to compare next with. Sí, primero decimos, ¿verdad? Uh, now people drive um, internal combustion engine cars. O sea, carros a gasolina. So now, now people drive um, gas cars. Next, we are going to have to drive electric cars. Sí, entonces es luego, ¿verdad? Algo que pasa ahorita y algo que pasará después o luego. So that's the use for next. And then, en el principio aquí teníamos, perdón, teníamos uh, in the future. And for this one, we have in the near future. Sí. In the future. And we also have in the near future. Que eso se refiere a en el futuro cercano. In the near future. All right. ¿Alguna duda entonces que tengamos con estas time expressions o esta, esta forma ¿verdad? de poder hacer contraste entre pasado, presente y futuro? ¿O lo tenemos claro? Porque si lo tenemos claro, les voy a preguntar que me den algunos ejemplos. Ayer les costó bastante darme ejemplos a los que les pregunté. Porque, ajá, simplemente lo que tenemos que hacer es pensar, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo era algo hace unos años? ¿Cómo son las cosas ahora? ¿Y cómo puede, pueden llegar a ser en un par de años? O sea, para eso es que se utiliza principalmente el time contrast. Eh, no es algo súper necesario, o sea, no es como que lo vamos a hacer todo el tiempo, pero es importante que sepamos, ¿verdad? Algunas frases que se pueden utilizar, porque en algún punto podemos estar hablando con alguien acerca de este tipo de situaciones, o sea, cómo algo solía ser y cómo lo hacemos ahora. En el trabajo, pues, todo el tiempo las cosas están cambiando, las reglas, los equipos, todo lo que se utiliza y para esto mismo, pues, será importante, ¿verdad? Quizás en algún momento conocer cómo explicarle a alguien, ¿no? Pues, la semana pasada, cuando todavía teníamos el sistema antiguo, o sea, tengo que recordar yo cómo se decía, ¿verdad? La semana pasada. Entonces, si se dice a week ago. Y luego yo puedo decir, but today, o nowadays, ¿sí? hoy, o hoy en día, utilizamos este otro sistema. Um, luego, lo del Zoom tal vez no sea en ese caso aplicable, porque pues a veces quizás no sabemos cuáles son los cambios que se van a hacer. Pero sí, por ejemplo, en el caso de algunas personas eh, que tienen su propio negocio, you guys can say, soon I'm going to start selling things from a different distributor. Entonces es... Eh, también, ¿verdad? Como un estilo de predicción. Pronto voy a empezar a vender cosas eh, de un distribuidor diferente. Así que por eso es bastante importante que conozcamos a detalle, ¿verdad? Cómo se utilizan eh, estos contrastes en el tiempo. Ok, so, next one. We have intonation in statements with time phrases. Intonation in statements with time phrases. 
Eh, si se han fijado, el énfasis en la mayoría de estas oraciones casi siempre sí, se lo he hecho al principio. A few years ago y luego el resto se lee con un estilo bastante calmado. ¿verdad? A few years ago, not many people live here. People used to play, I'm sorry, used to shop at, uh, at grocery stores. 50 years ago, people walk everywhere. These days, the population is growing so fast. Today, people shop at supermarkets. Nowadays, people drive their cars. Soon, there will be a lot of shopping malls. In 20 years, people might buy groceries by computer. In the future, people are going to use cars even more. Entonces, eh, intonation, when we have time phrases, cuando tenemos estas eh, expresiones acerca del tiempo, cualquiera de todas las que se han mencionado anteriormente y las que ustedes llegan a necesitar en algún punto, porque no es que solo esas se pueden usar, ¿verdad? Sino que claramente se acomodan a lo que necesitamos. Um, tenemos que recordar que es bien importante que hagamos énfasis a la hora de pronunciar esa expresión de tiempo. ¿sí? El motivo es porque de esa forma vamos a estar aclarando en qué punto, en qué momento se encuentra la conversación. Porque no sé si a ustedes les pase, pero siento yo que es una situación bastante común, que a veces uno está contando una historia, ¿verdad? Algo que pasó hace días. Entonces, y alguna persona se distrae, no entiende, entonces, y luego piensa que es algo que está pasando justo ahora, que está pasando ahorita. Entonces, es bien común. O si no, a veces ustedes están hablando acerca de planes que tienen, ¿verdad? Ah, no, que quiero ir de vacaciones con la familia. Sí, en Guatemala hay lugares bien bonitos y así. Y la persona que estaba por ahí alrededor tal vez no escuchó del todo bien eh, de qué ustedes estaban hablando. Entonces, o no prestó atención al momento en el cual ustedes estaban refiriéndose y allí se genera esa confusión. Así que por eso es que cuando hablamos acerca de, um, de las time expressions o cuando hacemos uso de las time expressions, es importante que estas tengan bastante énfasis, tengan bastante entonación, porque así se va a entender mejor, ¿verdad? Se va, o al menos ustedes van a hacer su trabajo, pues. Eh, van a, a mencionar, ¿verdad? Las cosas con una voz un poco más alta eh, y de esa forma ya eh, entiende la otra persona a qué ustedes se refieren. So we have, in the past, very few people use computers. Today, people use computers all the time. In the future, there will be a computer in every home. Como les decía el día de ayer, esta información no es algo eh, tan nuevo, tiene quizás alrededor de unos 20 años, entonces... Algunas cosas que para nosotros hoy en día son eh, regulares o comunes, ¿verdad? En aquel entonces, cuando este libro fue publicado, quizás era algo extraño o novedoso, o que en este caso específico también, ¿verdad? Se, se predecía, se alcanzaba a predecir. Uno de los ejemplos que nos puede dar eso es esto de acá. Ese fue un ejemplo que me gustó bastante. O sea, que dice, y es bastante específico incluso. In 20 years, people might... Buy, buy groceries by computer, ¿sí? O sea, en 20 años las personas podrían comprar sus uh, alimentos, ¿verdad? Por, la compu por computadora. Pues en la actualidad es algo muy posible, muy común. O sea, y many people do it. I haven't, I have never done that, but many people do it. So it's basically the same with this one. The prediction is in the future, there will be a computer in every home. Nowadays, I will assume that many people have up to what? Three computers in every home. For example, in my house, if we count phones as computers, because they are, what's, it's a little bit of what they are, we would say that there are around eight computers in my house. So you see, it's a prediction that it actually came up to, um, to be true. Okay, entonces, esto, lo de la entonación en las eh, frases de tiempo, entonces es algo de mantener siempre, ¿verdad? En el recuerdo, que cuando yo diga hoy, mañana, pasado mañana, tratar de que eso sea evidente, de que eso se escuche fuerte, porque así la persona va a saber en qué momento está basada la conversación y no se va a confundir a pensar que estamos hablando acerca de algo que está pasando ahorita. Ok, esta conversación es lo que vamos a estar leyendo ahorita. Is Are You In Love? as the title of it. 
ahí la tienen ustedes también en una de las um, de los de las pruebas o de los ejercicios que hay eh, en la plataforma y pues bueno lo que vamos a buscar hacer en este momento es la práctica de lectura hace un par de días que no tenemos esto así que vamos a intentar hacer lo mejor posible sí so the reading is titled are you in love um, We, are, well, the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to read it, okay? I'm going to read it for you, so please try to pay attention. Después, cuando ya lo haya leído, voy a empezar a llamar, perdón, para que vayamos haciendo la práctica uno por uno, ¿sí? Esta vez vamos a leer un poquito más, no solo va a ser un solo, un solo párrafo, sino que vamos a tratar de leer toda una columna, una persona, y otra columna, otra persona. Así que vamos a ver, voy a hacerlo un poco rápido, así tenemos el chance, ¿verdad? De que, um, de que varios puedan, puedan participar. So, here we go. Are you in love? You think, uh, you think you're falling in love. You're really attached to a certain person. But this has happened before. And it was just a crush. How can you tell if it's real this time? Here's what our readers said. If you're in love, you'll find yourself talking to or telephoning the person for no reason. You might pretend there is a reason, but often there is not. You'll find yourself bringing this person into every conversation. When I was in Mexico, a friend begins, you interrupt with, my boyfriend made a great Mexican dinner last week. You might suddenly be interested in things you used to avoid. When a woman asks me to tell her about football, I know she's falling in love, said a TV sports announcer. Okay, so you're falling in love, but falling in love is one thing and staying in love is another. How can you tell as time passes that you're still in love? If you stay in love, your relationship will change. You might not look, uh, sorry, talk as much about the person you are in love with. You might not call him or her so often, but this person will nevertheless become more and more important in your life. You'll find that you can be yourself with this person. When you first fell in love, you were probably afraid to admit certain things about yourself, but now you can be totally honest. You can trust him or her to accept you just as you are. Falling in love is great. Staying in love is even better. Ok, esa sería la lectura. La parte eh, superior y esto azul lo vamos a omitir en el, por el momento. Así que bueno, de forma voluntaria, ¿quién quisiera ser el primero en leer? No lo voy a llamar así eh, directamente, así que ¿quién quisiera ser el primero así voluntariamente? Recuerden que de esa forma también pueden elegir, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál lado van a leer? So, any volunteers or do you guys want me to call you to participate? Okay, who said yo? Was it Ivania? <laughs> or Rita? Okay, so Rita, you're going to be the first. Uh, who is going to read this section then? Rita, or which one do you want to read, Rita? ¿La primera o la segunda sección? La primera. Ok, entonces Glenda eh, la segunda sección, por favor. So Rita, when you feel ready, you may start your reading. Uh, ¿Hasta dónde? Hasta... Sería hasta TV announcer, hasta acá. Announcer. Sí, esta Oops. vez es toda la columna. Ok. Ok. You see, ok. You think you are feeling in love, you are really attracted to a certain person, but this happened before it was just a crowd. How, how can you tell it's real this time? Here's what all the readers say. Mm -hmm. If you are feeling in the load, you I find yourself talking talking about telephoning and the person for the nervous reason. You might pretend there is a reason, but often there is not. You might find yourself breaking this person into every conversation. When I was in the Mexico, a friend begins your interruption with my boyfriend. 
makes a great Mexico dinner last week. You might sound a little be interesting. In the in the things you use it to avoid when a woman asks to me asks me to tell her all about football, I know she's falling in love said a TV a sports announcer. announcer. Okay. Glenda, go to the second column, please. Okay. So you so you falling in love. But falling in love is one thing and staying in love is another. How can you tell as time passes that you, you're still in love? If you stay in love, your relationship will change. You might not talk as much about the person you are in love with. You might not call him or her so often. But this person will ne nevertheless become more and more important in your life. You, you find that you can be yourself with this person. When you first fell, when you first fell in love, you were prob pro probably afraid to admit certain things about yourself. But now you can be totally honest. You can trust him or her to accept you, you just as you are. Falling in love is great. Staying in love is even better. It's even better. Great. Very good. Okay. Now, uh, what if we have... Uh, Eden Nilsson and um, Gustavo, maybe. So, Eden Nilsson, you do the first column and Gustavo, you do the second. What column, teacher? Uh, the first one, please. All the way down sure. from, from here, from you to announcer. Okay. You think you're falling in love? You are really attracted to a certain person. But this has happened before. And it, it was just a crush. How can you tell if it's real this time. Here's what our reader said. I, if you are falling in love, you, you will find yourself talking, talking to or telephoning. Telephoning, mm -hmm. telephoning, no, 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 telephony the person for no reason you might pretend there's a reason but of, often there's not you find yourself bringing this person into every conversation when i was in mexico a friend begins you interrupt with my boyfriend made a great Mexican dinner last week. Continues. Mm, yes. You might certainly be interested in things you used to avoid. When a woman asked me to tell her, uh, her all about football, I know she's falling in love, said a TV sports announcer. All right. Now, Gustavo, you continue with the second column. Okay. So you falling in love, but falling in love is one thing, and staying in love is another. How can you tell as time passes that you're still in love? If you stay in love, your relationship will change. You might no talk as much about the person you are in love with. You might not call him or her so often, but this person will nevertheless become more and more important in your life. You'll win, you'll, you'll think 
that you can be yourself with this person. When you first fell in love, you were probably afraid to admit certain things about yourself, but now you can be totally honest. You can trust him or her to accept your use as you are. Falling in love is great. Staying in love is even better. Even better. Okay, good. Very good. All right. Now I think we're going to hear from Susana on the first column and uh, Guadalupe with the second. So Susana and Guadalupe, please. Um, start, uh, you think. Yes, and you okay. finish with announcer. Announcer. Mm -hmm. You think you're falling in love. You're really attracted to a certain person, but this has happened before and it was just a crush. How can you tell if it's real, real this time? how you can tell if it is real this time here's what our readers said if you're falling in love you'll find yourself talking to or telephoning the person for no reason you might pretend there's a reason but often there's not um, you'll find yourself bringing this person into every conversation. When I was in Mexico, I fr a friend begins, you interrupt with my boyfriend, made a great Mexican dinner last week. You might suddenly be interested in things you used to avoid when a woman asks when a woman asks me to tell her all about football. I know she's falling in love, said a TV export announcer. Okay, now we hear from Guadalupe. Okay. So you be falling in love, be falling in love is one time and staying in love is another. How can you tell as time passes that you're still in love? If you are still in love, your relationship will change. You may not talk as much about the person you are in love with. You might not call him or her so often, but this person will never, never tell it become more and more important in your life. Uh -huh. You'll think that you can be yourself with this a person. When you, when you first fell in love, you were probably afraid to admit certain things about yourself, but now you can't be totally honest. On it, you mm -hmm. can trust him on her to accept you. Just as you are falling in love, is great staying in love is ever even, even better. better. Okay, good, very good. All right, now uh, let's see. We are going to have, oh, sorry. Um, we're going to have uh, Ivania and um, Lorena. So Ivania and Lorena. Ivania, you start with the first column and Lorena will go with the second. Okay. okay. Are you in love? You think you're falling in love. You're really attracted to a certain person. Yes. Yeah but this happened before and it was just a crush mm -hmm. how can you tell if it's really a time this time here's what our readers say if you're falling in love you'll find yourself talking to or telephoning the person for no reason 
you might pretend there is a reason, but often there is not. You'll find yourself bringing this person into every conversation. When I was in Mexico, a friend begin, begins, you interrupt with my boyfriend made a great Mexican dinner last week. You might suddenly be interested in things you use to avoid. When a woman, really when a woman <laughs> ask, mm -hmm. ask me to tell her all about football, I know she's falling in love, say the TV sports announcer. Okay, very good. Bueno, me dijeron por ahí que Lorena está ocupada, dicen ahorita, así que entonces vamos a dejar a... Creo que lo vamos a dejar hasta ahí, ya que básicamente llegamos al final de la hora. But, uh, you guys did great. I noticed that, you know, your reading is very stable, and that is what we're looking for. You know, we need to get fluent, we need to get confident. And when we read, that's basically what we have to do. Try to keep on going at a steady pace. And if we mispronounce some words, just let them be. And, uh, you know, some of those words are going to be better pronounced in another occasion. But uh, so for now, all I have to do is basically just thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this afternoon's class. I hope that uh, you are here tomorrow. Remember, we are very possibly going to have a class on Friday because of what happened last Monday. Um, but yeah, hopefully we're going to be here tomorrow again. So have a good afternoon. Have a good rest of your day and see you tomorrow. So take care and bye bye for now. See you tomorrow, teacher. Okay, bye-bye.